So a quick little video today, I've uh, got this uh, little Belkin print server here and I want to actually modify this to add a uh, better antenna on the back there because uh, my little print server that I've been using for quite a number of years, I've just uh, moved my main printer into a cupboard and unfortunately not all the uh, computers in the house can actually connect to this little print server anymore so I'm uh, going to have to upgrade. Now the reason that I chose this little Belkin one over the uh, ViewSonic one is because when I put the FCC number into the uh, FCC database there's some internal uh, photographs on their website showing that you've got this uh, dipole antenna here and there's a piece of coax running down and connected to uh, one of the traces on the board but there's also a trace that isn't used with solder pads and uh, all the components there for a second antenna so it's going to be really easy for me to modify this to put a uh, bulkhead SMA connector on the back of there and have two antennas running on this uh, one little print server and what we've got here is a uh, example of mass production at its finest I've got the uh, little print server here and here I've got a uh, router and it is the exact same case they just changed the back plates there and the uh, front plates on these so to actually get into the case you've got two Phillips head screws underneath this label here and you want to be really careful peeling this label back because you want to actually put it back when you've actually finished because like I say there's a lot of information on that label so be really careful get uh, a sharp knife and uh, just lift up one of the corners and gently peel it back. Now because this has uh, got a high rose connector for one of those traces you can just simply unplug the uh, little dipole antenna here and pop that out and you can get uh, one of these little pigtails already made up with a high rose connector on the end. I'll put a link in the description to these and you could just mount that directly in the hole that's left after you actually remove this uh, dipole antenna and just click that onto the uh, high rose connector there and uh, you will be connected so you can add an antenna to this but uh, what I'm actually going to do I've uh, got this pigtail here and uh, it's got uh, the two females on either end there and uh, I'm going to actually remove this little high rose connector I'm going to desolder it and clean up the pads and uh, I've got this one for 99p and I'm just going to cut it to the actual length that I want so I'm going to mount one here and mount a second one there and uh, this coax is a little bit better than this uh, thin flimsy stuff here so it uh, will hopefully give me a uh, slightly better signal so here's a closer look at the two traces then and uh, what I'm going to do is get my soldering iron and just come in at the side and slowly heat all the copper on that high rose connector and then hopefully a little push and it should come away from those solder pads. Just make sure you get plenty of heat in there first otherwise uh, if it's not all uniformly uh, heated up and melted you could easily rip one of the traces away so just take your time get in there with a soldering iron and get plenty of heat in there and what's also interesting about this board is on the underside here you uh, can also solder on to the bottom if you really wanted to but uh, these two points here are extremely small but I've already checked with continuity this outside circle here is your ground plane and the inside circle there is uh, actually your signal wire so you could actually solder onto the back and uh, leave the uh, high rose connector completely in place there so that's just another option but I'm going to remove this high rose connector so there are the two solder pads this one had the high rose connector on and I've removed it completely and just tidied up those solder pads there and this one that uh, wasn't used I've also gone in and uh, tinned up the solder pads just to get a bit more solder on those pads and uh, also on that um, signal wire there in the middle so I've drilled a hole for the new connector in there and I've trimmed away all the excess plastic on the original hole but it's just a little bit too big to actually latch on with one of these bulkhead connectors so I've got a nylon washer there on the back and another nylon washer on the uh, front there so when I uh, actually screw it down it'll uh, hold itself in position there quite well it's better than using epoxy and uh, I've just put a second one on that new hole as well just so it looks uniform at the back 
So I'm now getting ready to solder the uh, coax in place. So what I'm going to do is cut this coax to length. But uh, this one is uh, pretty straightforward. It's going to run along there. And I'm going to actually solder the outer braid to that back pad there. And then bring the signal in at a right angle and solder it down in there. But uh, this one though is going to be a little bit different. So I want to actually cut it slightly longer than what you might think. Now, I don't want to cut it here and start stripping it back with just this little bit of coax to actually play with to uh, solder down onto that pad. If you do that, you'll uh, probably get it wrong and then probably have to put another SMA connector in because you've cut this uh, coax too short. The uh, best way to actually do that one is this uh, coax here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a loop in it so it loops back on itself and that way I can now solder it down onto that pad there and onto that signal wire and uh, once I've cut it off I've got a little bit of play on the length there so I'm not too worried if I actually cut it a little bit short because I've got that little play on the loop so this one's going to be looped over itself but the uh, second one, this one along here, should be uh, pretty straightforward. So I've got the two coax soldered in place and the board back in the case and I just wanted to check that we've got uh, plenty of headroom for this coax that will loop back on itself so that looks good. So I hope you uh, found this uh, short little video interesting. The uh, print server itself was just something that uh, I needed to do for myself because as I explained at the beginning so I thought I'd uh, get the uh, camera out and uh, do a quick video of me actually modifying one of these and now we've uh, got a print server with uh, much much better range it definitely uh, lets all my devices in my house connect to it now and uh, do check out the FCC website as well on uh, searching the FCC numbers you can glean a lot of uh, information from their website um, so I'll leave uh, a uh, link to that in the description below as well so as I say, hopefully you enjoyed it. Comments below and uh, if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and hopefully you'll uh, join me for the next one.